and start the uh, meeting with uh, calling it to order. And we'll do the uh, um, Pledge of Allegiance here to get it started. So if everybody's ready, I'll do, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag, the flag United of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic, and to the republic for, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. Okay, thanks. And the, um, all right. So, all right, um, we'll go into the approval of the minutes. So, oh, let's see, we don't have our review. Well, Linda's from the review committee. Um, so our last association meeting was back in September, uh, September 12th, and we appointed a review committee of LaToya, um, Jenkins, who is our VP of Communications, Linda Voltman, our VP of uh, Membership, and Cheryl Longsworth, who is our VP of Leadership. Um, now, I guess, Sue, since we um, we don't have quorum, um, how... I was trying to do this, not your playing ball. Pardon? Let's see, was there... Oh, well, we're getting more people coming in. Great. Oh, our uh, <clears throat> treasurer is joining now, too. So I, I can speak on behalf of the committee for the meeting. Oh. Are we going to wait for a quorum or? As far as as far as the minutes are concerned, that's not a crisis. We can go ahead on that part. Thank you. So go ahead with the um, report on the approval of the minutes, Linda. So uh, the minutes are approved with one correction for a name spelling. Okay. And I'll make sure to get that to Becky. Okay. All right. Now we, um, should we, well, we need to appoint a committee to review the minutes from this meeting. So we have volunteers to be part of the Minutes Review Committee for this association meeting. Okay, we've got Peggy Parker, one, and Linda Boltman, and Sue, Sue Dean. So we have three people um, as part of the Review Committee for the Minutes. Tom, you might explain why we use it by committee. Sure, yes. Um, at an association uh, meeting, for one, because association meetings are sort of few and far apart, and the um, uh, the people in, in, we need people that would be able to then review the, the minutes so then they can, uh, be, as a committee, bring it to the next association meeting and say that they have reviewed it and then move uh, move forward without having to have the entire uh, members that are attending a future meeting, many of which may or may not have been at the previous meeting, to, to review the minutes. So it's a more efficient way of dealing with approval of minutes um, from association meetings when they're so far apart and the, the number of people attending uh, from one meeting to the next can vary quite a lot. So it's a bit, uh, I, is that something that um, units also tend to do that way for their association meetings? No, okay. It's They can, but most don't. If there's a big meeting, if there's a, then they would. But, you know, if you have seven or six people showing up, then you don't have to, but. Okay. All right. Okay, so we've got our um, uh, appointed our committee to uh, approve the minutes from this one. And 
We'll move right into the budget updates. If our treasurer Chan is ready. Did you make her a co-host so she can share? Oh. I was just going to say. Uh. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, Every time I go. Okay. You should be a co-host now. Every time I'm in Zoom, it messes up my laptop. Hold on. Okay. It's going really slow. So our, uh, just as well, Chan is getting ready, I'll, I'll mention that our uh, third district um, uh, is doing the budget a bit differently than we've done it in the past. Uh, Chan has brought uh, a lot of knowledge and experience uh, in, for doing accounting. Uh, she's really more of a professional and is pursuing a, I believe you're pursuing a CPA uh, when I'm ready to take the test, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're, <clears throat> we're quite fortunate in having her expertise. Um, consequently, it's uh, she's helped in put in some in place some things that have improved. Um, for one, our access and record keeping of our financials and the various documentation uh, involved. Okay, so I did drop in the chat um, a PDF version of what I'm presenting in this Excel format. The Excel format is for me to make any changes if you guys want to make changes to what um, Sue and Tom, we met, um, when did we meet? Last Friday? Yeah. To go over this and make the necessary changes. So the PDF version has those changes. And the Excel version that you're seeing here right now is to make further changes if anybody wants to make more changes. So, um, you can zoom in a bit. It's yeah, I'll I'll make it larger. Okay. Okay. So a budget is typically only for revenue and expenses, where you would um compare the actuals to the budget. And based on what, you know, the sample that was given on CAPTA's website and what you guys have prepared prior to me taking over, I have the different various tabs, which you guys have in the PDF version on the second and third page. So the first one is the budget versus actuals is what we have accumulated or used throughout this um, year already compared to what was approved, but these are the revised numbers. And then what the third column is, is basically what um, if we were over budget. If we are over budget, it would be in black. Okay, so if it's red, that means we're still under budget. So going down the um, list, we have revenue, the $437 calculated um, based on what we have in the trust account right now that are on hold from disbanded PTAs. So we do have the two year hold and I do have dates in those um, line items in QuickBooks. And so estimating that there's gonna probably be about $437 coming from the trust into the checking this year 
grants from other nonprofits, which is the grant from CAPTA, it's a thousand. Interest income, we increase that from $1 to $5. Uh, membership envelopes, um, I believe that still stayed the same. Um, and then the PTA memberships, we did increase that. As you can see, we, we were um, more than what we had originally. So we increased it to 7,500. So total revenue sources for third district is $9,142. Expenditures, we're planning to get, you know, use up the thousand um, from CAPTA. So that's the expenses related to that revenue. We're estimating, we included convention. We're budgeting for a convention because this year's convention is happening in May in Ontario, California. So $500 for the registration fees. Um, legislative conference, which Tom is attending. He already spent the 280 for the registration fees. We budgeted 325. Accounting fees are, um, you know, any fees related to accounting, like payroll and, and, and that sort is 200. We just left it as what we approved originally. Um, CT application fee. I believe that stayed the same, $625. We didn't make any changes to that. Disbanded fines and fees. We estimated $500 to pay um, CT um, delinquent fees. So that stayed the same. Insurance is 450, kept it the same. We originally said we were gonna change that, but because of the workers comp surcharge that I just initiated, that plus the regular insurance kind of totaled to almost $450. So I'm leaving that as is. Office expenditures, um, estimating about $1,000, which consists of these line items underneath here. That's why you do not see a budget um, amount here, because these will roll up to kind of offset that. For the bank fees and service charge, we're estimating $50. That was the original amount. And so, so far we have incurred $25. Officers reimbursement. That was one of the major changes that um, we did in our discussion. I believe it used to be 200 and we're increasing it to 1,000. Um, Tom has been traveling across, you know, cities and things to do um, conduct PTA businesses. So we are increasing that and then to accommodate anybody else who wants to put in reimbursement for their mileage that they travel for PTA um, businesses. So payroll expenses, these stayed the same. Made no, we made no changes. Uh, yeah. Uh, since that is really sort of the uh, the um, bulk of our expenses, just for those that may be attending that may be unfamiliar, um, we have a office secretary that works uh, three hours a day, uh, three days a week. So that's where our um, salary and wages expenses and payroll tax and some of our office supply expenses come from. Uh, let's see. What? Anybody have a what, question? What, what happened? What happened? What happened? No questions. Keep going. Meetings and workshops. Two hundred and fifty dollars is what was budgeted. The food and beverages um, kind of rolls up to this amount here, so that's why there's no budget amount there. Reflections, we estimated 100. I believe we reduced that one down to 100. I can't open the file that we were talking about, so I can't see which ones we made changes. These are all by memory, so if I'm incorrect, Tom and Sue, 
You're doing very well. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, let's see, travel, airfare, hotels, and travel meals. Those are all for convention. We did not budget that originally, so we are budgeting it here. So that is an increase of 1468 for the convention. And then to our our total expenditures come to $14,668. And because we are only estimating bringing in $9,142, we do have a deficit of negative uh, $5,526. And I know a lot of people will be alarmed by this red number, but let me explain what that is. It is a net loss in a profit and loss statement okay so this amount will go against what our in nonprofit terminology is our fund balance okay our carry over fund balance and so right now this is only a cash balance i don't have an accurate fund balance that carried over because this amount in here includes some liabilities that um included some new units fees that we collected that has to go back to the new units. So again, this is just a cash balance. It's not a fund balance. But based on what was done in the past, it was based off of cash balance. And so I'm doing the same thing here. We started with that amount on June 30th, 23, minus what we're estimating for net income for this year. We're left with sixteen thousand one hundred twenty-seven dollars and seventy-four cents. And then the PayPal and the trust bank account; those are um, a lot less. PayPal is zeroed every month now, so there should not be a balance. And I didn't have the time to update the balances. It, it was just. Um, I worked really late last night to compile this, so I didn't have enough time. <laughs> And then now back to the receipts not belonging to the district. These are all balance sheet items, what we call the balance sheet items. Yeah. And so this is what was on the original budget as well. Yeah. If you can zoom in again. Oh, yeah. Sure. This is why it's important to learn your shortcut keys because <laughs> I can't find it down here. It's still thinking. Um, thousand dollar was budgeted for remittance advanced repayment from units. So it there could be scenarios where the third district will pay something for other units up front, and then we will collect that money back from the unit. So that's what that is. And the corresponding payable for that thousand is down here, which is the liability. Therefore, they would offset each other. In the original budget, we estimated $100 for Founders Day, $598.06 of the grant that CAPTA gives us is going to go back to them. Membership per capita is the memberships that we collected that on behalf of the units, and then we send it off to CAPTA. New unit charter member dues. These are the amounts that we collected on behalf of the new units that goes back to the new units when they establish their bank account. So we're estimating $1,800. So none of these numbers change from the original. So total amount not belonging to the district is $19,498.06. Plus the thousand will bring it up to $20,498.06. As you can see, the total in and the total outs match each other. Therefore, there is no variance. There's no money that the third district keeps. Okay, they all go out to their appropriate entities. Anybody have any questions on that regard? I think you explained very well. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And no questions on the income portion, the income net income profit and loss. So everybody's okay with the updated numbers here. Mm -hmm. okay. It's pretty conservative. So nothing um, too much other than, you know, accounting for the yeah, kind, kind of surprised there aren't uh, you know, questions because district finances are a bit different than unit finances. So there are things that are probably un unfamiliar uh, expenses or perhaps uh, incomes that uh, that people that are just dealing with units aren't, aren't familiar with. But uh, one of the things that, as I understand, has occurred is during the pandemic, um, uh, a lot of our expenses uh, have been in the past having to do with paying uh, for people to go to convention. Uh, when it's in Southern California, then there's airfare and hotel um, expenses that are involved during the pandemic pandemic because a lot of these um, events went virtual then it allowed that money to be saved so to some extent we built up some reserves in our budget so what one of the reasons uh, they chose is that we have those reserves so we're spending it down so that's why the uh, income and outflow for this uh, budget shows that we are um, it's, we'll be spending more than than our expected income. So, um, but if, if anybody has any questions, and even if they think of them later, uh, you feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions, provide any information. I believe in full transparency, and you know what our third district does in our finances. So. I just want to make sure that everybody uh, in our units, everybody uh, feels comfortable with how the third district is managing its its money. So thank you very much. I did want to add one more thing that I did not add on here is that we, the three of us, Tom, um, Sue and I were discussing that we are going to save a portion of this amount to carry forward to the new year to cover payroll costs. And I believe we came up with what was the amount? Five thousand to carry forward. I uh, yeah, that sounds is, right. Okay. Well. All right. So if we're gonna do that, basically that's a way, Chan, of guaranteeing that we have the money for the first couple of months' salary or whatever before some of our income comes in. Is that right? Correct. So now let's see, is there a check ratification that uh, we should do during this meeting too? Yes, there is. Um, give me a second. Before I lose my train of thought. Do we need to adopt this or are we adopting this later? We need to adopt it. We'll have to ratify that adoption later though when we have a quorum, okay. but we need to go ahead and adopt it. Okay, so I don't know that process. So somebody needs to motion? So uh, I move we adopt the revised budget as presented. Second, Amanel Dorsey, Carol Elementary. Uh, thank you. And so <clears throat> the uh, the budget is adopted. Oh, oops, sorry, uh, Peggy. Have, oh, we have to call for a vote. Yeah, right. Okay. You need to All vote. Right, thank you. All those in favor of the motion to adopt the budget, uh, say yes. And, or you can raise your hand or give a positive indication. Um, okay. And all right, I see a thumbs up 
uh, also in the participant list and hands up. Okay, any opposed? Raise your hand or say no. Okay, hearing none, then the budget is adopted. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I vote yes. I didn't raise my. Do I need to raise my hand? Uh, I think yeah. I think we have it recorded that uh, that we've got a majority. Okay. Uh, approving it. So thank you. Uh, okay, I'll raise my hand here. <laughs> okay. I vote. I vote yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Amano, what school are you from? Carroll Elementary. I'm the president at Carroll Elementary. Thank PTA you. PTA president. Yes, ma'am. Am I supposed to be on camera? <laughs> it, it's, yeah, you're fine yeah. if you want to. Fine. Okay. Yeah. I, I will in a minute. I'm just picking up my kids from the uh, after school program. All right. Let's try to get this open. I do better in Excel rather than Google Sheets. So my Excel is working. So what I have done, these are all the transactions from the beginning of this school year to the end of December. That needs to be ratified. Um, so here is the list that I get exported from QuickBooks because the reports that are in QuickBooks doesn't look so pretty and you can't tabulate the, the totals and, and whatnot. So can you make it bigger, Chan? Yes. I <laughs> and can you scroll um, kind of slowly so people can read a little bit because you're not going to be able to show the whole screen. Let me... It's... Let me... That's still pretty small. Yeah, I, I I know. Okay. Let me um, put it in the chat. That way you guys open it on your end. Okay, it's in the chat. Why Chan is doing that, Tom, you might explain that any, the voting body or any people from units as well as the third district board that are attending the meeting can vote. Yeah. So you're, you're a welcome participant, not just a guest. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know how I can fit everything on the screen yeah. for you to see. So, um, yeah, to, to elaborate a, a little bit on that point, uh, everybody that in the third district and everybody that's, uh, becomes a member of a unit in the third district, uh, part of the dues that you pay, uh, not only go to your school, but they also go to the California state PTA, which makes you a, a voting member of the, on the California state PTA when they have such things as uh, uh, events and conventions there, but also on the third district PTA when we have an association. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's, that's why all PTA members in the third district are welcome to vote on motions that um, happen at this third district PTA association meeting. It's not just limited to the, okay. on our executive board. Okay, thank you all for the knowledge. Thank you. Okay, so we are gonna begin with, a lot of our transactions are coming out from the general fund, okay? So that's our operations um, account. And so as you can see the transaction type, it says bill pay. So these are the payments that I made on the invoices that I receive. And as you can see, 
The line item text on here says a lot of BAs, which are batches to CAPTA. These are all membership submissions to CAPTA. Okay, so these are the dollar amounts that have came out for those memberships from units. And then this one is for the return of the leadership grant from the previous year. So that has been taken care of. Um, and then when I scroll down further, these are all the checks that have written thus far. Um, some were written prior to me taking over that just cashed in the new year, such as this one right here. And then starting with all of these, I started writing those checks and you can see in the descriptions what they're for um, and who, the, who we paid. And then the dollar amount in that column. Okay. So, and then the ones I, I, we usually don't ratify deposits, but it's part of the list that I exported. So all these are all the deposits that came in, but all of the outgoings are here. Plus there are some more down here. They're not in order. That's why I had to make a summary. So you can kind of see in the summary, bill, bill payment, we paid approximately $14,184.26. Chan, hang on one sec. These are the electronic payments? Yes. H how many? Does it give a total? Uh, and what? count? Yeah, Maybe just the count. number of uh, uh, transactions. Okay. There are 13 transactions for ACHs. Okay, for a total of 14, one, is that 184? 184.26. Thank you. Let me, let me. And <clears throat> most of those are um, when units send their dues for members that haven't paid via totem. If they haven't paid by totem, then the membership due comes to third district. We hold on to it. And then we send a most of that on to the California state PTA. Okay. So. Except for yeah, 75 cents per per member. All right. So on to the next one are the checks. And uh, Linda, the count is right here, 19. 19 checks were written and cashed during this period. I, I actually have to do ch check numbers, Chan. Thank you so much. I, it, just scroll up for me and I'll just jot down. I know most of them are in sequence, so, but 6343, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 199, 45, 47. and then 47. That's the nice part about this being recorded. You can go back and look at the check numbers to yes. clarify. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. So, and then I'll just go 6347. You can scroll down. Actually, we'll have this. I'll, we'll put this in the notes with Becky. Uh, so what, do, when we make a motion to ratify the checks, we part of the motion doesn't have to specify the check numbers? It does. It, it it so what we can do is um well sue you can you can if there's no missing if i'm wrong if there's no missing check numbers the motion can be the beginning check number through the ending check number and the total amount correct and the total amount and the total amount for those so we can go 6347 through 60 we have to be careful okay, that so there is a break one. between this and this. Okay, yeah, got so that. Six, three, four, three, six, three, four, seven, all the way to six, three, six, four. Okay. There's okay. no break in between those checks. Great. Six, so there's only one break. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
So I've got the 6343 for 19935. So really we just have to subtract 19935 from the 1093. Oh, there we go. Could it I is a total of $10,739.95. 93995 Okay. Okay, scroll up where the break is again. So the motion and that break be... was at the beginning then. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So everything. So what's the ending one? The ending, the ending one is 64, 6364. For 10,739.95. So you can go ahead and make the motion, Linda, if you want. Okay. I'll make a motion that... Um, we ratify checks numbers 6343 for 19935 and then checks 6347 through check number 6364 for a total of 18 transactions equaling $10,739.95. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any questions or discussion? Okay. Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Uh, Tom, can oh. we say an easy way if people want to just hit their space for bar and that temporarily unmutes themselves and they can vote verbally if they want? Okay. Either way. Or, so. All, um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Any opposed, say no. Okay, hearing none, motion passes. All right, thank you. Okay, so then we have some more uh, disbursements here. Oh, okay. These ones are well this one was a batch submission um from the previous year that just uh got sent in the new year as you can see how close seven three was close to six thirty it was submitted at six thirty but then it didn't get um paid until seven three so that one is for memberships as well um these are all using card so these are all card transactions here. Oh, so we actually also have to ratify uh, these disbursements, even though, right? They're yeah, electronic. because they're outgoing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Did we already do the first portion here? No. Because no. those are all ACHs, and then these ones are using credit the debit card to pay for these. Yeah, I was waiting before we ratify the 13 electronic fund transfers for the 14,184. Yeah. I was going to see what else is down there, but let's let's just nip this in the bud and I make a motion that we ratify uh the 13 electronic fund transfers for a total of $14,184.26. I'll second the motion. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Any opposed say no. Okay. Hearing none, motion carries. So now these are the using the debit card to pay for. And I do want to make one um, note of this 2186. Uh, Cheryl used her card in, by accident, but she refunded this amount. So there is a refund amount down here that will offset that transaction. So I just wanted to make that clear. How many do we have there? So we have five card transactions. 
So AC, there are, are they all considered ACH or wouldn't that still be an electronic Yeah, they still fund? consider ACH. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we ratify the five uh, ACH or electronic transactions, California State PTA for 5475, TechSoup for 75, GoDaddy for 2317, Amazon for 2186, and California State PTA for 280 for a total of $454.78. Second. Second. I have a motion in a second. Uh, all, any discussion, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, um, any opposed say no. Hearing none, motion carries. All right, those are all the transactions um, to be ratified. The rest are all deposits, which we don't ratify. So, um, but you guys can take a look at it. The Excel version is in the chat box. So, if you guys have any questions, just send an email to treasurer at thirdpta.org and I can answer it from there. Thank you. What, a, what a great example. Just for you units, um, this really helps keep things crystal clear and everybody aware of what's going on. So important to not just list the check numbers or the most don't have uh, ACH cards, but the check numbers and what they're for and really take a minute to look at what the check was written for and just kind of compare it. Uh, that's that's a, one of the best things you can do for checks and balances. Just really be aware of the finances. So thank you, Chan, for what a great example. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes, and yeah, thank you, um, everybody. Um, it's uh, for allowing us to get the business of uh, our third district out of out of the way. And I think. Then, is there any, anything else, Chan, that you have from your perspective as treasurer that you want to include mm -hmm. while you've got the floor? Let me just do a summary view of the treasurer's report from July through um, December. So as of December 31st, statement of activity is equivalent to the income statement and statement of financial position is equivalent to the balance sheet, if some of you guys know the accounting terminology. So statement of activity here is what we have made so far. Here, let me blow that up. I know some people is going to ask me to do that. Um, so the total revenue we made so far to date, as of December 31st, is $6,826.64. Total expenditures that we have spent is $3,288.50. So as you can see, we are having a profit at this point in time is $3,538.14. So those are our profits. Statement of financial position are your assets, liabilities, and fund balance, okay? So this is what we have in the general fund, which is our operations account, um, $26,579.42. PayPal Bank, we had $20. The transfer hasn't taken place, but it did in January. So um, trust account, we have $1,890.50. Total bank account um, or money that we have is $28,489.92. Again, this is as of December 31st. The liabilities that we have outstanding are the payroll taxes that we have to pay um, from July through December. And then we still have about 1744.74 cents of memberships that I still have to submit to CAPTA, which I believe I have caught up. And so that should be zeroed next um, next month and then the new charter the new unit charter member dues we still have ninety dollars to cut to um new units 
the disbanded unit payable, this is how much we have from disbanded units that we have to hold for about two years before we can recognize that as income or if the unit is going to restart themselves and then the money goes back to them as well. The equity is what we call the fund balance. And so this is what was carried over. These two lines were what was carried over before I took over. Um, and when we went um, to QuickBooks, we went from Excel to QuickBooks. And then so the net revenue, this number right here is what came over from the income statement or statement of activity from above. So this is what our fund balance is looking like at this moment. Anybody have any questions? That's what I just um, wanted to show everybody for the treasurer's report. Any questions? No. Looks like you covered it very well. Um, okay. To satisfaction of, uh, looks like everybody attending. So. All right, I will go ahead and stop sharing. All right. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Thank you again, Chan, for that. Um, Next on the agenda, we're going to uh, recognize that uh, this year we had new units join. Um, see if I can bring up the list of units. Um, okay. Okay. <clears throat> so new units that joined this this year um, were uh, well, Dyer uh, <clears throat> Kelly uh, Dragons and San Juan Unified, uh, Natomas uh, NP three Elementary and Natomas Park, and then Natomas School. Um, Natomas Unified School District, as well as uh, see Heredia Ariaga, that's also in um, Natomas, I believe. And uh, Isabel Jackson uh, joined from um, Elk Grove Unified School District, Lycan Bears uh, from San Juan Unified. And then our, the most recent ones have been Florin Bears, uh, also in Elk Grove. And uh, Bowling Green, which is in Sac uh, Sacramento City Unified. So we've we've gotten quite a few new units join. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if, I, oh, so I think some of the people attending are from those uh, units, new units. And yes, thank you very much for joining. And as always, feel free to let us know. <laughs> How, how we can help and make sure that uh, your inaugural year of uh, being a PTA runs uh, as smoothly as possible and what, uh, reach out to us to uh, anytime you need help. Okay. Now let's see, Cornet is our reflections chair. Um, I don't see that she has joined us this evening, but uh, there, are, let's see, I think I do have a list of uh, the schools that uh, participated in the Reflections Art Program. Um, and it's, sir, I see one of our other officers, they want to kind of explain a little bit about uh, Reflections. And what in so well, I'll, I'll mention it. The Reflections Art uh, Program. It's a it's part of the nationwide Reflections Program that is sponsored by the National PTA. And there's 
lots of different categories that students are invited to participate in, uh, including photography, um, literature, visual arts, uh, dance choreography, film production. Um, and we had, uh, let's see, five schools participate this year um, in, in the third district. They were uh, Olive Grove, um, Sutter Middle School, Aspire Capital Heights Academy, Folsom High, and Genevieve Didion. So the the uh, the winners in from those uh, in those various categories, which I actually come to think of, our, our third district needs to, um, I guess be involved in picking winners in some of the categories where there is uh, competition. And then those get forwarded on to our California State PTA. Um, anybody else on our executive board care to elaborate a bit more on that? Just go ahead and jump in. Okay. All right. And Next, um, okay, then next uh, advocacy information. Our vice president of um, programs, Denise Morgan, um, you have the floor if there's something you care to share. Sure. Um, first, thanks for that good overview on the reflections program. I'm new to this role and new to a lot of the different offerings that we really have. So I'm, I'm just really excited to get up to speed and I was able to help support Trinette and she was able to really kind of train me along the way. So um, we'll be more, uh, I will be more engaged with that next year, but it's really exciting to see the artwork that comes from the students, both the, just all the different um, methods and models that come, come through that. So sharing that, the one thing I do wanna share. So again, my name is Denise. I'm available to anybody for any questions that they might wanna to bring to their units that might be something of interest to their communities. Just highlighting some things that are coming up. We do have the legislative conference that's coming up next week. So if any of the unit leaders here on the Zoom have any interest in really what, can, what, what, what California State PTA does legislatively in and around working with legislators and in and around different policies and procedures that have passed. This is a great opportunity to engage and learn about advocacy and really learn about what kind of um, voice you can have in that arena. So there is still time to register if you're interested. Um, the fee, I believe, is $315. Registration closes this week. We're going to hear from Dr. Shirley Weber. We're also going to hear from, I'm going to get my screen up here. If I can find where it went. Um, and two other legislators, we're going to hear from Senator Portentino, and we're going to hear from Senator Laird. We're going to hear from somebody from the LAO office. And we're going to also hear from NAMI, um, which has to do with um, advocating on behalf of mental health for our children. So if anybody's interested in that, feel free to reach out. I also want to talk a little bit about School Smarts. That's another program offering that is available. This is usually something that's involved with the um, your school administration because it is a, 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 an offering that can be paid through the LCAP, but it's something that you could basically create a collaborative within your community of up to 30 people that could really learn about all the runnings and all the operational nature of um, school education school finance, like all the different workings of um, this big broad category of what we call education policy and all the rest of it. So that's a great opportunity to um, really inform your, your community. If that's of interest, you could certainly reach out to me. We also, I just wanna mention convention. So that is, as mentioned before, taking place down in Ontario this year, May 3rd through the 5th. This is a great opportunity, not only to collaborate with other leaders, but again, if you're interested in advocacy, what an amazing place to really get the full flavor of what that's like. 
I say that because I was involved with a resolution committee last year. So knowing that California State PTA, we operate from resolutions that our entire body works from. And to feel the enormous support that comes when you're sitting in a room of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people with hundreds of delegates that are supporting all of this effort on behalf of youth and children. I just have to say the advocacy momentum that you can gain from that effort is well worth the experience. So I really do hope you might think about that. Um, we also recently joined uh, as third district, a coalition partnership with the Sacramento Literacy Coalition. So I say that because there's different, obviously in the community, different organizations that might you might be interested in lending support. So for instance, if you had literacy in mind in your schools and you wanted to do something fun like a literacy night or some sort of partnership, that might be something where we can kind of bring extra bang for the buck for the effort. So again, if there's something of interest or you have something in mind, feel free to reach out to me. Um, there's a couple free movie offerings. There's one called The Right to Read. That's a virtual movie offering, and I can share that link if anybody's interested. And then there's also an advocacy effort um, that's taking place in Berkeley, and it's called Hopeville. And this is also has a lot to do with really um, supporting literacy in, our, in the state. And again, that's a free opportunity, all about advocacy. So as you can tell, that's kind of a personal passion of mine. So if any of you school leaders, any uh, unit leaders here on this Zoom have any interest in, and want to reach out, programs at, is it programs at third district? Oh gosh, I don't even know my, Tom, what's my email address? Programs at <laughs> thirddistrict.ca? Yeah. Okay. 3rdpta.org. So programs at thirdpta.org. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you all. <laughs> so yeah. if anybody has questions, I'm 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 happy to answer them now, or you can always reach out um afterwards. Can you put your email in the chat? Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm going to put my personal one too, which is the CAPTA, because um, I see that one just as much as I see the third district as well. I do want to just share, I'm also, I also have a role on the um, state legislative team. So kind of on a bigger, broader role, when I say that my heart and passion is in advocacy, I am not joking around. So call me if you want to learn more. Thank you. Something I'm passionate about as well, so I will call. <laughs> I look forward to it. Okay. So <clears throat> now we can go into basically, um, actually, I guess at this point, we could probably um, adjourn the business meeting and go into what I call the ask us anything. So this is just kind of more um, what you know. some people have described as a virtual mixer where uh, there's uh, we drop sort of the formality and people can unmute themselves, uh, chat with each other. Um, if, if uh, you know, feel free to, if you haven't been doing it already, feel free to, you know, send chat messages to other people. Um, you, if you want to put uh, what school you're, whether your school is elementary um, or middle, uh, one, so feel free to just kind of add and also ask us if you have any questions for us. So just go ahead and uh, open up and ask any questions you've got. And feel or feel free to you know take the floor if there's something that you want to share with the entire group. Go ahead. Um, yeah. uh, You've got our attention. Great opportunity to ask any questions. <laughs> yeah. And there's no such thing as a dumb question. It's just something you need an answer to. Yep. Or clarification <laughs> or. Okay, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Amy. Hi, hi, I'm Amy Lopez, and I am a new board secretary 
um, or PTA, PTSA secretary at School of Engineering and Sciences, which is the middle school and high school combined. And um, brand new, we did in the agenda earlier, the new or the, the, the latest units that were just added, does that mean that they just, you know, that PTSA just got their membership together and officers elected and they're brand new? Is that what that means? Yes, yeah. Yes, but they didn't organize themselves. We helped them organize. Yeah, okay, that's good to know because we're, I guess we got off to a late start as well. And like I said, I've just, I've only been to one, two meetings uh, and then we went on holiday. So, um, and and we're, we're struggling to get membership because we started so late, elected officers so late. Um, and, you know, I guess we didn't have a succession planning or any sort of planning from last year to keep, you know, this functioning or going on day one. And so I wanted to, so that's good to know so I could let, them, hey, we're not the only ones. I'm sure people are struggling too, or other units are struggling, but any ideas from you and on gathering membership so late in a school year, we'll say so late, but to, you know, how do we, what are some of the ways that, what in which other units have, you know, what have they done or any ideas to get that going to get that sort of uh, momentum or, or excitement or, you know, engagement, stuff like that. One of the things you can do, because it is now January and you started late, have a membership drive now. A lot of times, a lot of people cannot join at the beginning of the school year. So now that you have January and a brand new uh, year starting, you can start clean and fresh and say, hey, um, you may not have been able to join earlier, but join now. And this is how you can do it. This is who we are. This is what we have planned for the rest of the year. We're excited about doing this and this and this, and we'd like your help. And um, that's a way to do it. And if you are not using Totem, which is an online e-membership plan, you should because it is the easiest way for people to join. If you have a Facebook account, you can post it on Facebook, say, here's how you join us on Facebook. And it costs the person who is joining a $1 fee to join. So if your membership dues are say $10, it will cost them $11 to join your PTA. But, but it's convenient. Yeah, it's convenient. People can do it over their phone. Most of you uh, younger people like to do it on their phone. It's just simpler. And they don't even question the $1 fee. The dollar fee is automatically taken out. Uh, so the membership fees are feathered out of your bank account. The national portion goes to national. The state portion goes to state. The $0.75, 75 cents, oh, $75, woohoo, 75 cents goes to third district automatically. The rest of it is shuffled into your bank account once a month. And that is all there is to it. It's really easy for your treasurer. They don't have to do a lot of thinking. So I would really encourage you to think about doing that. And um, and that's on the Facebook, only on the Facebook part is what you're talking about? No, no. no. Facebook is an easy way to link to people via social media saying, hey, we're on Totem. Join us this way. It's totem. Um, okay, totem is the one that totem is the e membership. That's what it's called. And you can look it up on the California State PTA website. You can probably also ask Linda Voltman, who is our membership chairman, more about it. 
Um, it, it's very easy. If you can still have people join with a, a check or cash, old fashioned way, but those memberships, you have to remember that you have to, at least once a month, remit the $5 per capita to your um, to third district. Sorry. Okay. And the membership drive then is just like, is this a noticing, hey, come join us? Or is it actually like a whole event with? No, like it's whatever you want to make it, Amy. Okay. Um, in, in the beginning of the fall, you can make it a really big event. Yeah. Um, okay. In January, you can say this is, hey, it's time to start fresh. We're going to. This is what we have planned for the rest of the year. We want your help to do this fundraiser or these events or whatever you want, whatever your PTA has decided to do. It's a way to get them excited. The other thing is if you have in-person meetings at each in-person meeting, have a membership table there so that people can join. And if you're having a membership meeting, ask people, have you joined PTA yet? Hey, I just happen to have a membership envelope here. Please join. Uh, it's mem membership is everybody's job. You have to have at least 15 members to be a viable PTA. Okay. That includes your officers. So ask everybody, ask grandma across the country, ask your neighbor, ask the teachers, ask the school board principal, president, ask everybody. It, oh, now, Amy, yours, your PTA is already linked up to TOTA. You just need yes. to use it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, and, I understand that. And it is important that every, every day should be a PTA membership day. And, and really, Peggy hit it on the head. The, the most important thing you could do is ask. Make the ask and be ready to respond with why. Why, why would I join your PTA? Mm -hmm. There are so many good things you guys have that you can promote. Own that, right? What, what, especially as a new PTA, what are your – pick out three really good objectives. What three things that you really want to promote that you are – whether it be a program, whether it be a community involvement, whether it be – parent participation at the site, whether it be um, whatever it is. A newsletter, whatever. Uh, communication, enhancing the communication at your site. Pick out three of them that kind of encompass the, the very, I mean, and this is where as you have, as you have your meetings, your members are going to talk and say, hey, you know what? I would love some information on mental health services. I would love to see our school getting together and having more family nights we would love it if we had a science night so get that information get get the get the members talking encouraging them why do you want to be a member well you should be a member so that you have input you have a voting voice we would love to have you have great ideas we'd love to have you be a member then you start getting a few of these ideas and that's what you're going to want to promote why join? Because we have a science night planned. Why join? Because we have a teacher appreciation, parent appreciation, community appreciation event planned. It might be something as as simple as uh, parent appreciation. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. We have parent, teacher, student, community appreciation. But it might be um, with your first bit of funds that you're getting something really simple where you're giving back like a popsicle night so every person attending gets a popsicle you know ice the, cream the, social <clears throat> ice cream mm -hmm. social the only reason i said popsicle is because depending on how many people you have and the yeah. funds you can feed a lot of people a popsicle for minimal <laughs> but yeah. that i mean you can definitely grow on that ice cream socials are huge you need servers <laughs> and you need definitely other helpers but Okay. You are so invested in all of you guys in your schools that 
be loud and proud. I mean, this is huge. We are promoting the better for all of our students, our teachers, our communities. Every microism unit is part of a bigger community. And that's what this is all about, supporting each other, promoting unity at our sites, at our schools, with our parents, with our massive diverse populations. Yes. Enjoy that. It, this is a, just a great platform. CAPTA, 3rd District PTA, I encourage you to check out those websites. They have such a wealth of information. You do. Denise is on board as programs. She's already provided her information. She has a wealth of information. But really, I recommend just perusing CAPTA site, C-A-P-T-A-C-A-P-T-A dot org. And just get yourself familiar with what PTA is all about and what specifically California PTA is really working towards and, and their missions. And you'll see it all aligns with ours. We have, I don't know, 41 districts in the state of California or something like that. 29. 29, 107, I don't know, 29 yeah. districts in the state of California. Um, okay. Just get, just really kind of get familiar and that's going to help with the questions as well. Yeah, state PTA's tagline is every child, one, one voice. voice. That's actually nationals as well. Every child, one voice. We speak for every child with one voice, whether that mom is a PTA member or not, whether that kid is from a rich family or comes to school hungry, every child, we, we speak for every child with one voice. And that's what you are part of. Who well, else had? We have two other next? hands up. Yeah. I think it was Amal first. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, go ahead. Thank you for being, thank you for being here. Um, a few, I have three questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. One is, um, that was a great question, Amy, about membership because our whole board was new this year. And so we were trying to get our membership up and by kind of trying to do creative things that and having our table out at every event, just being ready. We have a board in the office. We have a wonderful secretary that decorates that and makes it engaging, but we, we haven't been able to reach a quorum a few times. Yeah. So I did, I did notice on your agenda, like, you're, you have to ratify something from maybe September. So like if we don't have a quorum for our next few meetings and the budget is not passed properly, what? how do we handle that? Miss Sue, you're... <laughs> well, first of all, you need to be creative and think of some ways that you might motivate um, people to come to your meetings. It okay. could be if you can go to businesses and get donations for drawings, sometimes that helps. Or okay. you can talk to the principal about um, whether the principal is willing to grant uh, extra recess time on a one-time only thing to the class who has the most participants at the PTA meeting. Oh, that's a good one. Because okay. the kids will get their parents there and you'll get a quorum. Because unfortunately, okay. unfortunately, um, if you don't have a quorum at meetings, then right. you can make decisions, but you really can't carry them out. You're going to have to ratify them at the next meeting in order for them to be legally okay. Um, okay. And so, that's something right. you can promote. You can say, you guys, these, this, these are the things we want to do. We have got to have 15 members present so we can move forward please find the time to come to this meeting so we can get these uh, approved or ratified. Okay. Okay. Those are good ideas. I, I will work with the principal on that. Thank you. The, and sometimes, the other piece sometimes, was, parents, uh -huh. sometimes parents will come if you let them know that the principal will be giving an update on school activities. They'll come okay. for that if nothing else. <laughs> okay. That, those are good ideas. I will bring those to the next board meeting. Thank you. And the next one was, 
there are four of us on the board, only four. <laughs> and so the other, some of the other members prefer to meet on Zoom, but we're having a hard time discussing things. So I know um, I was like, maybe let's meet face to face and do something fun to get to know each other. And then, and then we could discuss the budget for next year. So what do you, like, how did you guys get to know each other when you were new or just onboarding as the board? We met at a, we met at a pizza place and it was okay. a chance to socialize and um, third district provided pizza. And, but it was that face, as you say, it's wonderful when you can get the face to face um, so that people kind of know who in the world they're dealing with. Yeah. Right. Cause I just feel like, you know, so much can be misconstrued through mm -hmm. text messages or emails you don't really get the flavor of who the person is. Right. Like yeah. Their positive side. Yeah. Right. I, I, I tend to recommend uh, having a face-to-face -face gathering. And uh, I recommend also mentioning that even if there's just be like refreshments and cookies, just mentioning that, then people think of it, oh, refreshments and cookies. This is a more of a social get together that people feel a lot more comfortable with where if they just think, oh, you know, it's a meeting, they're less hesitant, they're gonna be a lot more hesitant to, to come. So, I mean, having food okay. is a great way to break bread together, even if it's a cookie in a, or a donut. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, Adrian, I guess you're up next and then Bridget. Yeah, thank you, this is great. And then now that everyone's kind of, it sounds like we're all kind of in a similar position. Um, I'm from Regency Park Elementary. I'm the president there. And we also are new. Um, all of our previous boards during COVID graduated, they're all gone. And we're getting a late start now. And I'm, I'm working with limited previous documentation. And so um, in the meetings that I have, and I'm talking to folks on campus and our principal and our teachers, you know, everyone wants to have the really fun conversations about engagement and ideas and, you know, getting together. But where I'm kind of feeling like I'm not comfortable or confident is in the infrastructure of putting our PTA back together, um, training all of our board members so we know exactly what functions we're supposed to be performing and how we're supposed to be performing them. Um, like, like even just as questions I have about how much money are we getting on totem, I actually don't know. Um, and so since we're getting a late start, I don't know if I missed meetings where there was like a, like a, like a orientation or a briefing or I don't know. I, I hate to say, I don't know what I'm doing, but in these kind of spaces, I, I just am feeling not particularly confident that I'm doing all the like PTA policy and foundational items I'm supposed to be doing. Training. And I'm on that website right now. Is this where I need to find all this training? And this is where I can find everything I'm supposed to be doing and that, that my board members are supposed to be doing? Uh, it's, a, it's a place to start. Yeah, there, there's on our third district PTA website, there's a training uh, web page, and we have recordings of training sessions that we have given uh, for secretary, treasurer, president, uh, how to do taxes. That, that's, yeah. that's a good place to start, but uh, also, you know, reach out to us because if, if you want, and can sometimes be a little difficult after school uh, it starts to get people coordinated, but we can uh, come on site and do training. Um, also, we do have some new units that, let's see, are there any new units that ha we have um, that will be scheduled? Well, actually there is. Um, I need to schedule training for like Di, Di or Kelly. But what things, uh, reach out to us and uh, let us know that you would like training because something that I think might might be able to do for like when we give training to new units. And if we know that you have people on your board or others in anywhere in the third district that would maybe like to come and get a refresher, then they can come and sit in when we're giving training to other units. So, and if there's enough, uh, if you want to get your entire board together where they want to do training, we can schedule a training on site at your school site for them too. Yes, 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 yes. 
Um, we are very interested in that. We are all eager to, you know, do the best that we can for our school. And so we're happy to go to another school and partner up with other groups or have you come to us. So um, I'll send you a follow-up email and we would like, like to do that as soon as anyone's able to do that. Okay, great. Yeah, thank okay. you. Um, let's see, Bridget, I guess if you want to un yeah, unmute. Hello. Um, so I am Bridget Dixon. I'm from Isabel Jackson Elementary. We also um, had a late start um, and we can't, we got up and running in October. So I definitely understand all the um, questions on memberships and, and all of that trainings and different things. So definitely appreciate you guys bringing those up. Um, my question, um, when you guys were going over the financials and approving the budgets, um, it was mentioned that there may have been a grant. I don't know if I misheard, but there may be have been a grant. And um, I was wondering um, how you guys signed up for that and where did you find that information? Is that something that you guys are aware of that um, the local PTAs can take part in, in grants? Okay. Um, that, uh, well, see, I, I think the grant that was mentioned um, it is one that uh, frequent, well, every year there is convention and the California State PTA in some past years has uh, given grants to from the California State PTA to district PTAs to encourage uh, them to get people inside of their district to go to and attend convention. So if I recall correctly, that grant that Chan referred to is one that we had gotten um, last year and we have when that occurs, we send out notification to our units that if they want to apply for a grant to have somebody um, go to convention, then we decide, you know, for example, if it's a thousand dollar grant that the California State PTA gives to us, then we may set up where there are, you know, four $250 uh, grants that then we will give out to um, U PTA units uh, based upon them applying and frequently the application is um, gets we'll decide on a, like a first come first serve basis. Um, but that is that can all be up in the air because um, it will be usually much closer to convention before we hear whether the California State PTA is going to be uh, giving those grants uh, again and how much they'll be. So that is that is that particular grant um, that, uh, that was referred to. Now, uh, yeah, be, being a you know, 501c3 nonprofit, there's probably other grants that you can go out and search for yourself. But I- does another, it... good, another good place to look, although we're past the, the ideal time, is the National PTA website back in August and September lists a number of grants that are available to units to apply for. Um, so that's a good place to mark in your procedure book to, to check that so that the next board knows to check. You can look now, I don't know what's on there, I haven't looked recently, but usually that the new listings are there in August or September, I believe it is. And there's possibilities from the state PTA as well for, for units. Okay. That is super helpful. Thank you. I'll check those out. Um, one other question. What is the best way to communicate with third district? Is there an email address? Is there a contact form on the website? What's the best way? Um, there, on, on our a... website, um, if you go to the third district PTA, you'll see a, uh, a web page that's about us. And if you click on that, you will, that web page has all our pictures and our titles. And uh, underneath our name, 
is got the email address for each of us. So uh, you can go to that website. That's also uh, on that web page. Um, I'm, if you scroll down, that lists the close to 150 PTAs we have in the third district. Each PTA is assigned uh, a, a mentor. Um, so you can also see from that who your mentor is. Although I think you know any of us will take questions from anybody, whether or not it comes from a unit that is one of uh, our mentors or not. And in particular, you know you may have a question regarding um, being a treasurer or something that then you might want to direct that directly to uh, Chan as the expert on being a treasurer, or perhaps Linda who is our VP of membership. Um, and Peggy, as you can see that she is our tax help assistant. So uh, depending upon what your question or area of interest is, you might direct it to one of us based upon our um, position on the third district PTA. And you can always direct it to me too, president at thirdpta.org. Uh, and I, you know, if I can't answer it, I'll find somebody who can. Sue is our parliamentarian. So if you question on bylaws or parliamentarian procedure. Um, so anyway, that uh, third district PTA webpage is a good place to start. Great, thank you. Okay, you have one more hand up. Yeah. Amy uh, has her hand up. Yeah, Amy, go ahead. Okay, hi. Uh, yes, um, uh, I was trying to come up with, you know, ways and how we can gather more members and what would be easier. And there was a comment when I brought it up in my meeting that maybe I wouldn't be, we wouldn't be allowed to, to do this. So I'm going to ask you um, if you, if this would be allowed, I guess, is um, I was saying that some of our parents may be working for companies that have an employee match when they make a donation to a, a nonprofit 501c3 that sometimes their their companies will match that donation up to a certain amount and i wanted to advertise that and remind parents that hey don't forget and this was last year you know it's tax end of the year if you want to make some do uh, uh, donations right off on your you know tax write-offs don't forget there's pta you know support your local pta and um, I would say there might be some limitations on advertising something like that. And I thought, well, it's the same thing as it's membership is what it is. And you're just kind of framing it in another way. It, would that be allowed? Um, yeah, it, it actually, the, the, what um, you can, the, the only thing that's not allowed is basically, as I understand, but go ahead and anybody knows, you know, if I say something incorrect, the only thing that's really not allowed is promoting a, uh, a business. So you can go out to businesses, ask for donations. You can tell them that you will recognize and thank them on your website. So for example, you can send out messages saying, we thank uh, Chipotle for their, you know, generous donation. And so you can, in some ways, um, put their name out there, which can be beneficial to that uh, business because then they get a good reputation. The community sees their name. They see that they're contributing uh, to your PTA. Um, and so it's perfectly legitimate to recognize and thank them, but you just can't tell people go and do business with them. So, um, that's that that's so, sometimes people get conf, you know there's confusion on that point uh linda go ahead i was just going to say to to amy's point um absolutely you can promote that as a 501c3 that they can go to their company website because that like my corporation that i work for i have uh any donations i make through the website my company matches up to a certain amount i also have work for time so uh, when I volunteer after so many hours, 15 hours, my company writes a check to the organization. So absolutely you can promote that. Um, it, it just, with that being said, I, which Tom, I don't think she was talking about uh, 
recognizing the companies. I'm, I mean, maybe not. That's probably where you came in. Uh, you just can't say, woohoo, thanks to Macy's for matching funds kind of a thing. Yeah. But as far as dollars, absolutely, you can promote, hey, if your company matches yeah. and you want to donate, just remember that the donation has to be, uh, you know, it, it can't be for something, right? So, like, if they're if they're donating $30 to your PTA, um, it can't be for, like, the membership or for uh, the okay. Gym. Something okay, so it can't be membership. Can't be like if it's ten dollar donation to PTA for me and it's for membership. They can't. Okay, so it can't. It can't be for that reason. It can't be for a membership reason. It can be a donation, but not for membership. Correct. It, okay. it, it can't be. I mean, because a membership is actually not a a donation because they're getting something for it. But absolutely, if you say, "Hey, your co if your company matches, you know, we, we would love a donation." Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for that. That helps me. It clarified a little bit more for me that there's a separation between what is membership and then versus a donation. So maybe that's why they said no, but we just didn't, we were just weren't, I wasn't making that connection. <laughs> yeah, and the recognizing. I mean, that's a big point. Like Tom had brought up, it's, it's, you can always say thank you so much, you know, but, but not uh, promoting the business. We can't promote it because then they're paying us to promote, right? Then it's not in kind anymore. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah. for yeah. something. But. Okay. okay. Yeah. Good, good uh, question. Well, I guess it's avoiding that quid pro quo type. Of right. <laughs> okay. You have one more hand and then yeah. we're running out of time. Okay. Uh, all right. Denise. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to just add, I think oftentimes we forget that so many in our own family, our own networks can also support PTA. So it's not just people that have children at school. It could be the grandparents. It could be people in your, in your book club. It could be anybody that could be a, a community supporter. And I think I'm correct to say an organization could become a member. I don't think there's a limit. Is that, or they can't. Okay. So Linda's has to be a there. person. Okay. So it has yeah, to be because they have voting rights. So it has to be an individual. Got it. Got it. But think about the, the individuals in your sphere that actually might be interested in supporting your children in the community. It doesn't have to be just parents in your school. So think bigger and broader. And um, the interestingly other... enough, a lot of people never ask their school board members or they forget to ask uh, people that are in government and things. I know when years ago when Ann Rudin was mayor, she used to have to come to a school and she says, I want to support PTA, but nobody ever asks me to join. And so a lot of times they'll join if you ask, and especially if you can make it real easy, giving them a QR code that they can join on Totem. Small businesses, uh, donut shops, uh, small businesses, Go into them, give them the flyer, tell them we'd love to have you join our PTA. Come to our meeting if you want to come. Uh, find out what's happening. The parents in your community, they they many times are uh, happy to join. Only thing I want to close this out with, and it came out came up today. Some of our biggest promoters are the children that want all the bells and whistles that you might bring. So let the kids rally their parents and their dads and their moms to come and be participating. So if you said, hey, guess what? There's gonna be an ice cream social for the class that has the most or whatever, those kids are gonna be your biggest promoters. So don't forget to let them do some of the work for you too. I'm gonna to jump off. I appreciate you guys so much. This has been fantastic. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you, thank you. It's, you know, it's, this is part of the, the best part of the meeting when we get to hear from the units and hear what, what their interests and concerns are. So as always, uh, reach out to us anytime we can help. And uh, I guess since we're up at uh, you know eight, eight o'clock uh, or past eight o'clock now, um, I'll go ahead. Oh, I guess officially adjourn the, the business part of the meeting. So business. The meeting is now adjourned. Um.
and feel free to, to um, yeah, you can feel free if you've got other things to do. Um, I'll go ahead and and uh, hang out in case you have, you know, you want to talk among yourselves. I'll, I'll keep the Zoom session open for for anybody if they uh, care to chat among each other or have things that you still want to bring up and ask or just or just comment on. So, but otherwise, feel free to drop off and continue with the rest of your evening. Thank you, guys. I got to go. Have a great okay. night. Night, Thank Linda. You. Oh, by, by the way, uh, Becky uh, is our uh, third district PTA secretary. Uh, she had to work late tonight, which is why she was joining late. But now at least you get to see a, a face uh, to match with a name. Hey, everyone. Sorry about that. Tuesdays are always my late nights. Yeah. But if you have any questions about the secretary role, feel free to email me, Becky at PTA, thirdpta.org, or secretary at thirdpta.org. Yeah. Oh, I'll go ahead and stop the recording too here.